Hey guys, Corrosive here. Hope you've had an amazing 2018. 2019 is going to be even better because we are jumping off the new year with a tutorial on Tempest SDR. If you're not familiar with it, hang in there for a moment. Um, RTL SDR blog did a, uh, a quick demo on this back in 2017. Essentially what the software is made to do is it uses a uh, software-defined radio, whether that's a HackRF, an RTL, an AirSpy, what have you, and it listens to the unintended radiation coming off your HDMI, DVI, or VGA monitor, it reassembles that information and it allows you to remotely view another monitor from a third-party computer just by listening to those signals. And it was an amazing demo, some of the stuff that was shown, um, but it didn't really come with a tutorial and a lot of people have been running around trying to figure out how do I get this software to work? It's so confusing, it's so finicky, and just finding that signal is very difficult. So I wanted to try and help you guys out by making it just a little bit easier uh, for you to find what you need. And one way we're going to do this is with a program called Tempest Test for Windows. Uh, before we get out um, get to that though, I did want to give a big shout out to Prog on Twitter. Uh, he is the developer of the AirSpy and the uh, SDR Sharp software. Uh, he graciously donated an AirSpy and AirSpy Mini to me um, late, late 2018. And so to kick off the new year, we are doing this video with the AirSpy, which has been a fantastic software to find radio for the purpose. And of course, you'll be seeing it in many videos in the future. So without further ado, the software we're going to use is called Tempest Test for Windows and if we run that on my local machine so you can see what it looks like essentially what you're gonna see is a bunch of bars that flash white and black and the uh, purpose of this is it's actually gonna play a Beethoven song uh, kinda like MIDI music using your screens unintended radiation and by doing so it helps us find our signal uh, for Tempest SDR and just to show you what we have I actually have Tempest SDR running right now and if we take a look you can see our target machine and uh, it's starting to move around a little bit but it's target machine one two three four five six seven eight nine and there's a few other tweaks in here um, some stuff that we'll get to uh, later on but you can see you can get a fairly crisp image uh, using this software good enough to see what somebody might be doing on their machine uh, right now you can see we're at 405 uh, megahertz and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close this software out so that we can go ahead and get to how to find our signal and then we'll try to tune this back in. So we're going to go ahead and stop the software. and It does actually crash on my machine. That's just due to the, uh, the drivers that I'm using. You don't have to concern yourself with it. We're going to bring up SDR Sharp and again we are using the AirSpy. So let me go ahead and fire this up. We're going to go ahead and use the full 10 mega samples per second. And what you're going to see is we have narrowband FM and AM. Uh, by default, you're going to be on narrowband FM. To pick up this music that's coming through the unintended radiation of our monitor, we want to be in AM. It'll make it a lot easier and a lot clearer to pull that out. And the way I'm going to kick this off on our remote attack machine is actually with a VNC session. So I'm going to remotely connect to that computer, and we're going to start up that software. So if we're just running through the spectrum, uh, you can see there's not a lot going on. But when we get into this range around 400, we see all these spikes. This is generally um, interference from a digital monitor. And if we come around here, it usually has some pretty distinct edges. Uh, let's see. Right around here, you usually get this drop off. Uh, it's usually more pronounced than that. It just depends where it's coming up on your spectrum. Ah, here we go. A drop off kind of like this. You've got a bunch of small little kind of humps here, and then it drops off a bit of a longer one before you get back into your general noise floor. So at any rate, we're going to start up VNC. And here's our target machine that we were looking at before. And we're going to start this Tempest test for Windows. And I may release um, a YouTube video that just loops that just to make it a little bit easier so you don't need the software. We're going to and switch to AM. And you can already hear some of the audio coming in. If we click on this, let me zoom in. So you can see by doing this, it makes it a lot easier to lock on to our signal. 
Uh, if we come down, you'll see that this does repeat itself all over the band. Uh, 405 seemed to be the strongest for me, but even if we came down to 275, I believe, that also has a mirror of this. Not as strong, but it is there. So if we restart the software, make sure we're in AM. You can hear it um, right down here into 275 as well. But you'll notice it's not as clear, it's not as crisp. It's a much weaker signal. So right around 405 is what we're going to try. We're going to go ahead and close SDR Sharp. And then we're going to open up Tempest SDR. And I'm going to zip this up for you um, with all of the extensions you need for the various SDRs. Making note that if you want to do this yourself without my zipped copy of this, make sure that your application extensions for loading your SDR is in a separate folder. If you place those in the same folder as Tempest SDR, you are going to run into an issue where it doesn't want to uh, load properly. So let's go ahead and open our Tempest SDR application. We'll give it a moment here. And it's just taking a little bit longer because we have all this rendering software and stuff in the background. It doesn't seem to like that. Just try and there we go. We're going to go to File, Load, External I.O. Source. And you, you can't see the open window, I don't think, with the way this is set up. Um, just know that I am selecting the Air Spies um, executable. And so now you should see Tempest SDR on the screen. We're going to set this to right about 405 and press start. And you can see we do kind of have an image coming up. But if you move around, um, you'll see all kinds of different things. Um, but essentially static. You have two planes here. Um, the bottom is generally set for your height of your monitor and the top being the width. Now, I haven't found that a single one of these um, predefined um, aspect ratios have worked for me or uh, screen resolutions I generally have to find it on my own one thing that does help is using this AUT button or this automatic button pretty good at finding that height peak and then from here you actually have to kind of move along the top until you find the peak that you need for um, your width and from what I'm seeing here it looks like our frequency may have migrated from where we were um, what I generally do is I turn down the L pass to a little under halfway while I'm searching. We'll turn the tweaks off. And then once we find the image that we need, we can kind of start using some of those tweaks and turning our L pass up a bit. I'm going to hit this RST button. It just kind of refreshes the waterfall image. And if we use these two arrows on the freak line, this will allow us to automatically hop up and down uh, the spectrum a little bit. We're going to hit that automatic again. And I think that's our image here. What we're going to do is we're just going to move this top band here. We're going to try and bring that in to our frame. And that actually came in very nicely. Now we're going to increase our L pass, get it a little bit crisp. You don't want to go all the way up. It tends to freeze the image just, just a bit below all the way. And then if you want, you can set this to high quality rendering or check out some of the other things here. And now you can see we have a nice, clean, crisp image of our target machine. And what I'm going to do for you guys, we're going to go ahead and full screen this. I'm going to set my headset down for a minute and I'm just going to walk over to the other computer here and I'm going to start messing around. Sorry, I muted my mic for a minute. So I'm going to start messing around and you can take a look and see uh, what we're actually able to pull in. So it's not the most amazing thing in the world, but the fact that you can do this with just an SDR, I find to be um, quite interesting in and of itself.
Alright, and so what you guys are seeing here is this is actually my YouTube channel playing a video. Um, if you watch my New Year's video, uh, you should be able to see that's actually me um, from my New Year's video. You can see the um, other channels being listed or other videos being listed along the side. Our top bar prior to this, I was on Google. And so if you want, um, while we're just kind of letting that go, there are some other things that you can do with the image to try and bring them in a little bit better. Um, we're just going to tweak with some of the settings, and you can see um, what those effects have on your uh, product, uh, produced image. So we can mess around with the uh, width here, and the width is actually changing this top bar here. It's kind of messing with that uh, frame rate, if I recall correctly. And you can use this to get a more crisp image. Uh, now, of course, you can also have problems with your image, depending on how you do this. This is why I keep the link frame rate with height um, turned off. You can link it, but by unlinking it, it allows you to uh, make some other changes. Uh, if we turn our gain down here a bit, you can see we can kind of make some changes to that image. Which actually, it's keeping it pretty, uh, pretty crisp. I'm surprised. You can invert um, depending on what is on the screen that may be useful. Uh, we can do auto gain after pass. You see we have a little bit uh, of a different contrast there. And now when I move my gain slider, uh, we're getting a better image here as well. So you can clearly make out that somebody's watching a video of uh, another individual talking. So are you going to be able to read somebody's password that's written in like 12 point font? No, but could you see if they're on Facebook or on YouTube or, you know, see if maybe they're running some sort of update if they're on Linux, for example? Uh, absolutely. Now, finding these signals obviously is not a simple task um, on its own, uh, but there is a lot that you can do to uh, simplify that process, and using that Tempest for Windows application is one way of doing so. It just makes it so much easier uh, being able to go in and generate a specified signal that you can hunt down and actually link to rather than just playing um, a video and hoping you can find it later. So. What we're going to do here, I'm going to turn auto off. You can see it kind of starts scrolling. This allows you to adjust the scroll of the video. And I would imagine this is how you can get it perfectly centered. I have not been able to do that at all. Um, like I said, the, the application is very finicky. Auto seems to do the best. I don't know if it's just my monitor or if it has something to do with um, the signal I'm producing or what have you. I have not been able to get a single window. I always have this double for some reason or another. Um, but I do tend to get good images nonetheless uh, once you find your sweet spot. And you'll see here, even if I move over, I'm still getting a, a reasonable image. Uh, you can see that my URL bar is now kind of down here, though. Um, We've kind of moved it a bit further away than it should have been. But your, your main thing is going to be your height on that lower bar. Um, between the two of these, though, is going to determine what kind of image you get and how crisp it is. Uh, the automatic tuning on here is sometimes really good, and other times it's just horrendous. Uh, it really just kind of depends. Uh, Rather than moving this bar down here, if you're trying to fine tune, I would recommend changing this height because the height will move it in little steps, whereas trying to click on it is going to cause you some problems. Uh, now, you'll notice that as I move this height, that's actually skewing with our width, um, as you would imagine. So if you move the height, you may need to come up here and adjust that frame rate for your width as well. Uh, to get the right image. And you might find that it's only going to work at one height. If you're off center from that, you might find that uh, you're not going to get a crisp image. Uh, so it really all just depends. But uh, really, that's all there is to it. Uh, once you get an image, you're pretty much all set. Um, what I'm going to do is just mute my microphone here. I'll do a couple other things on the PC so you can get an idea of the images here. But aside from that, uh, we're pretty much all set. Please like, subscribe, and comment um, if you have any suggestions, ideas, things that you just want to let me know. I um, really want to engage with the community and be involved in what you guys are interested in. 
uh, take a look in the links below. I'll have a link to all of the software that you need. Um, I may upload a video with that Tempest test, so that way you can play it on whatever device you want to try this with. And then, of course, another big shout out to Prague over at the SDR, uh, excuse me, the Air Spy uh, website. Uh, just amazing piece of hardware and uh, phenomenally uh, generous. Uh, to give that to me for the channel. So it is very much appreciated. And uh, if you guys would as well, hit us up on Discord. Uh, we'd be more than happy to have you. So with that being said, I'm going to step away. And uh, we're just going to keep playing around with uh, these images for a bit. And uh, let me know what you guys think. I keep muting my microphone before I leave. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one.